Hello there and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video. Now today I've um, had a bit of time and space to move myself into the front room, so slightly more um, cosier location to be. And I've been playing with a new bit of software that I cannot believe I didn't know about sooner. It's called Pico 8 and it brands itself as a fantasy game console. So I've got myself a little setup here in front of the telly, I'll show you it in a minute. And uh, I'll talk through the basics of what is Pico 8 and how it works. By the way, I keep trying to call it Pico 8 as it's spelled P I C O, um, but it's actually pronounced Pico, not Pico. So if I say Pico during the video, I'm sorry, it just, you know, keeps happening. Okay, so this is the setup I've got going on the uh, coffee table, and we're hooked up to a, uh, I think that's a 22 inch, or is it 16 inch? I can't remember. Uh, LED flat screen telly, a few years old now. Uh, it's just what sits here in the living room. Anyway, um, this is the main machine itself. This is a Ident Micro 1, and it's actually a kit computer I designed and built myself, for myself, because I wanted a sort of more niche, um, retro-looking microcomputer. And I, so I designed and built this, and people got wind of it on the internet over the past few years, and then I got inundated with people asking me, could I build them for them? Uh, so I built a couple more and then I actually uh, went ahead and designed a full-blown, if you like, cottage industry commercial kit, which is what this is. Uh, if I take the lid off, I'll show you inside. It's Raspberry Pi powered. So in this model, I've actually got a uh, Raspberry Pi 2 here. And then we have a USB 2 hub with uh, three external ports. And that's a Cat5 Ethernet for linking the networking through. Uh, originally these machines ran with, uh, were supplied with a licensed RISC OS operating system which didn't support Wi-Fi, hence the um, hardwire cable. However, uh, I moved on from that today and I'll be running a Linux build on this. Uh, yeah, so that's the hardware. I've got a wireless mouse, uh, the dongles on the back of the machine, and then I've also been uh, experimenting with uh, game controllers, so I've got a PS USB PS3 clone controller which is a little higher quality one and then uh, a very low market um, Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo imitation USB controller thing which is the one I've been trying to get to work and have done so anyway let's uh, boot the system up I'll put the camera back on the tripod we'll point at the screen so it's that technical and I'll give you a quick demo of the uh, software okay so the uh, telly's on Set to HDMI mode, uh, now just waiting for the uh, machine to boot. And I'll show you the how fast the boot time is. It's not the fastest in the world, but this is now power up of the Micro 1 system. It's about 30 seconds at the moment. Now we're using a Ubuntu. Snappy Core as the uh, base operating system. And there we go, there is uh, uh, Pico 8, keep on, Pico, Pico 8, I'm going to get that very confused. Uh, anyway, so we've now loaded into the, if you like, the virtual console, and it's a very kind of 8-bit retro looking console, but with all the um, power and RAM of modern systems, and I really do like it. So I've got my, let me bring that into view, there we are. So I've got my SNES controller, which is why then I've got a couple of uh, games, and there's just people writing new stuff for this system all the time. So let's, um, flute is a nice one. So I'm just going to play a quick game for you. And they're very simple games. But it just has a really nice sort of constraint um, view to it, which... Because it's got it's got limitations. Uh, it's 128 by 128 pixel screen resolution, which is in the day of sort of super HD it is very very low indeed. But it's those constraints that are nice to work in, and it, that's what gives it that sort of authentic 8-bit feel. Oh. 
Oh, wait, start, exit, there we go. Uh, one game I have started working on myself is a port of Nanagangs. Now those of you that follow the Wi-Fi Sheep channel will know Nanagangs from its BBC Micro uh, port I've been working on. But this is a sort of a very rough version for uh, Pico 8, Pico 8, sorry. Um, so it's just you've got the power to do full colour sprites, you've got side scrolling, uh, the fact it's working off a controller is really nice. Um, just basic hit detection in this, so it's it's not really a game, it's just a test at the moment, but I've built sort of the first level from the uh, BBC Micro plans, if you like, from the level I mapped in that, and that would be the end of the level. Uh, there's, it, there's no detection, there's no uh, game as such at the moment, but you can see Actually, you can see if I drop down, I don't die, it just respawns me at the top of the screen. And that was done deliberately while I'm kind of uh, testing out the level, but... But that's only been about two days' work. And what's nice is, that if I've got that loaded, and I hit escape, I will just say exit, and I hit escape again, exit the console. Now if I hit escape, you can actually get straight into the source code. Um, the programming language is called Lua and it's a kind of hybrid between basic and Python. It's really, really nice programming language to work in. It's all built into um, Pico 8. So your code environment, I'll just bring the cursor up. I've got a wireless mouse attached to this as well. So we'll just bring that in, there we go. So you've got a full editor and scroll through. So this is my code for nanogangs at the moment, uh, which might look horrendous, but it really is not difficult at all. Once you sort of break down the program and understand what's going on, uh, it's got built-in sprite tools. So here's the sprite map or sprite sheet, I should say. And you've got these um, eight by eight pixel sprites. So you can simply use uh, tools and you can paint so I can you know I can uh, you know paint just pixel paint something I don't quite know what that's meant to be but you sort of get the idea there you go um, yeah and then if you look further down we've actually got uh, the logos and things actually made up of different sprite tiles now the next one is the map and this allows you to physically plot and build your levels up in vision which is really nice so we just scroll out from there you can see here that was that level we were playing on the nanogangs and scroll in and it's built up different blocks so i can go back up to the top of my sprite sheet pick a block pencil to what and i can actually just place blocks and build up the level as i want music uh, sound and music editors are all here. I haven't done that yet, but it has all that built in as well. It has a sort of lovely 8 bit, uh, 4 channel tone. So it very much emulates those sort of classic systems. Um, we go escape again. Pico itself has got, um, it looks very BBC Micro ish. It understands com uh, command prompt like CLS or clear screen. Uh, and also Linux commands like ls and that will bring up a complete mess of a directory on this unfortunately because I've really been trying to hack this around to get it to work but it brings up uh, what's loaded in its cart system the cart system itself is uh, Pico it works by having different individual files which are if you like virtual cartridges uh, known as .p8s or .p8s.png it actually uses the PNG image format to encode files that then get moved around as cartridges, which is really nice actually. And the cartridges are tiny, each being limited to 32K. But unlike your traditional micros, that 32K does not need to be shared with the graphics or the sound. So it's just pure 32K of RAM or memory space, if you like, to build your game in, which is plenty for um, the way a uh, Pico 8 actually works. Anyway, so that's a very quick rundown of this uh, new software. I'm, I'm still working with it and learning, etc. I'll just show you what's underneath. 
so we go, um, there we go. Okay, so I've just shut down, and this takes us to the Ubuntu Mate desktop, which is sitting behind. Um, now if we go, uh, Micro One Home. I've done Pico there, sorry, Pico there. Um, so you double click your application, that would load. If you want to make changes, the files just for config and also the controller setup files are actually hidden. So I had to set up a, um, a bookmark with a hidden uh, Pico 8 folder. And in here you see it's got the cartridges and there's all the cartridge files. Uh, and also things like config and SDL controllers. Now this is important for this is how I got the uh, Super Nintendo controller to work. Uh, Pico 8 apparently does support Xbox and PlayStation controllers pretty much natively. I can guarantee that with the um, wired PlayStation controller it does work. However the third party um, off the shelf Super Nintendo didn't. So I had to get the SDL code for it, the Unix code, which is a RetroLink Classic controller, and you have to um, put this, there we are, put this piece of code, uh, the SDL uh, meta if you like, into the SDL controller's text file. I've also had to change, remap some of the buttons, and that now works. So it's important to do that if you're going to run on a Linux system, especially, I think on the Mac when I tried it, I had to do a similar thing, but I had to use a different code. Um, for the same controller, so make sure you get the right operating system with your controller. You can find all this uh, quick Google search uh, once you know what your controller is. We'll find all that. And it's a simple case just saving that file, and uh, uh, Pico will then understand it. Anyway, so we'll just um, go back and we'll just reopen. There we go. So I think this is an absolutely brilliant concept. The cleverest thing the author did was not try and launch hardware for this. Calling it a fantasy virtual console system means that it will run on existing hardware or you can build your own system for it, which is the best way to go. I'll drop some links in the description to this video to all the um, bits of software, uh, links to my Micro One project as well. Uh, if you're interested, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope we'll do a few more videos with uh, Pico 8 as I learn more about it. And we'll see you real soon right here on the Wi-Fi Sheep channel. Bye for now.